Hi, I'm Chloe Legendre. I'm a software engineer in Google Research, and today with Rohit Pandey, I'll be presenting our work, Total Relighting, Learning to Relight Portraits for Background Replacement. This is joint work with our other collaborators from Google, with the authors listed here. So in this work, at a high level, what are we trying to accomplish? Our goal is, given an arbitrary in the wild and tone mapped portrait image, we want to be able to relight the subject and composite them into a new background. Let's take a closer look now at our specific problem statement. First, we're going to start with our input portrait. As I mentioned before, it's just a tone mapped RGB portrait, and we don't expect annotation with any depth information. Next, we're going to assume that we're given a high resolution HDR panoramic lighting environment. This will serve both as the target illumination for the portrait, as well as the background. The idea here is that we can extract a view into the panorama with our target field of view, assuming that the panorama is sufficiently high resolution. And then from these inputs, we want to relight the subject and composite them into the view extracted from the panorama with consistent illumination. Now, before we describe our approach, I wanted to highlight some of the previous state of the art work, which was joint work between Google and UCSD uh, called Single Image Portrait Relighting. So this work from SIGGRAPH 2019 introduced the idea of using a neural network for portrait relighting, treating the whole process as a black box using a UNET style encoder decoder architecture. For a given input portrait, this approach did a relatively good job at changing the overall diffuse shading of the subject. As you can see here in this example, the color, intensity, and directionality of the illumination do appear to be changing for this particular input photo. We were inspired by this approach, but we wanted to be able to not only change the overall diffuse shading of the subject, but also to be able to both add specular highlights to increase the photorealism of the rendered result, and to be able to handle input images with strong shadows and specularities. And as you can see in this example, this approach worked best when the inputs were relatively flatly and evenly lit. Additionally, we wanted to be able to consider relighting in a holistic system with matting, rather than just using an off-the-shelf segmentation module. So towards our goal of background replacement from an arbitrary image, we need three components. The first is a matting module, and this is used to extract both the alpha channel and the foreground color from an input image. Next, we need a relighting module, which takes the target illumination and the predicted foreground from the matting module as inputs. And then finally, with these two parts, we can create the relit portrait using a compositing module. We use machine learning modules uh, for both the matting and relighting tasks, and we use just conventional alpha blending for the compositing task. We actually did an experiment adding a compositing refinement module using a neural network, but we found minimal improvements here that were insufficient to justify the added compute time. So next we'll take a deep dive into the two machine learn modules for both matting and relighting. And let's first look at the matting module. In our deep matting module, we start with an input image and a trimap that could be obtained using a coarse segmentation like you could get using a standard off-the-shelf segmentation network. So a trimap is a map of three different values, and this is used to tell the matting module which pixels are definitely foreground, which are definitely background, and which are we less confident about. This ensures that network capacity is spent dealing with the boundary areas, which likely need the most refinement. Now, the network architecture is set up using one encoder and three decoders, and all of them are in blue in this diagram, and all use a UNET type architecture with skip connections. One decoder generates the refined trimap, one generates the predicted foreground that we'll ultimately need to relight, and one generates the predicted alpha channel, which we'll ultimately use for compositing. The purple blocks in the diagram represent residual blocks that are used to refine the predicted alpha map. For the losses used to train the network, we include a loss on the trimap, the alpha mat in unknown regions, the foreground, the composited image, and a multi-scale pyramid Laplacian loss. For the relighting module, we again use several UNET architectures in series, which are designed to assist in relighting by supervising on a part meaningful partial intrinsic image decomposition. So given the foreground that's estimated from the matting module, a first network estimates the subject's geometry, which is represented as a per pixel surface normal. A next network estimates the subject's diffuse albedo, or actually a proxy of the diffuse albedo, which is essentially a flat lit portrait of the subject as if they were lit from even light arriving from all incident directions. Recent prior work on relighting using point light sources has shown that supervising network training with these intrinsic components 
can improve relighting results. So we leverage this finding in our approach, and we're not the first to do this. A final module, ShadingNet, predicts the relit foreground, taking the albedo and the original foreground as inputs. Now in the lower part of the diagram, this is going to show one of the key new contributions of our work, which outlines how exactly we supply the input lighting environment to our final relighting network. This idea is based on the diffuse and specular convolution operations, which are borrowed from real-time graphics for video games. First, we pre-filter or convolve the HDR lighting environment with cosine lobes representing either Lambertian or specular Fong, BRDF. Then by indexing into these pre-filtered panoramas using the surface normals, we can create this light map representation, which is an image of the subject's reflectance for either a Lambertian or Fong BRDF. In gaming, this has been implemented using a texture lookup using either reflection vectors or surface normals. But in our case, we can use the built-in TensorFlow image resampler. These light maps are then going to be supplied to the shading network that we use for relighting. The intuition now behind our light maps is that they provide a way to represent the input HDR lighting environments to the network in a way that's pixel aligned or spatially aligned to the input image. And this is important because UNet type architectures prefer such spatially aligned inputs. Here you can see a few different pre-filtered lighting environments and their corresponding light maps. And this is for a few different Fong specular exponent values, and then finally a Lambertian or diffuse BRDF on the far right. So previous work in portrait relighting, including the single image portrait relighting work that I introduced earlier, simply supplied the HDRI illumination to the network at the bottleneck of an encoder decoder architecture. Thus the network had to learn a complex mapping from panorama pixels to portrait pixels, which we avoid entirely giving our relighting approach an advantage. To visualize exactly why these light maps are helpful, we can look at a sort of visual equation that I hope will emphasize the point. For a given portrait A, we can predict the surface normals B and the albedo E. We can then use the diffuse convolved lighting environment and the normals to create the diffuse light map C this is the subject's appearance if they had a perfectly Lambertian BRDF. If you then multiply together E and C, you arrive at a diffuse reflectance image of the subject, D, which has the correct color, directionality, and overall diffuse shading, but misses specular highlights and more complex shading effects. Now the specular light maps, as in F, provide the final relighting network with a clue about the ultimate location of specular highlights in the newly relit portrait. And you can see this in the Fong shaded portrait in G, which adds together D and F. In H now, you can see our final neural rendering result. Now what we're doing is that we're essentially providing the layers of the Fong reflection model to the neural renderer. And we're asking the network then to learn more complex shading effects by treating this essentially as a residual learning problem. The idea here then is that we can use a very basic shading model, like the Fong reflectance model, and then ask the neural network to improve upon it for increased realism. And this is a much less difficult learning task compared with just portrait in, portrait out of previous work. Now to see how these light maps are used within our network, I'll turn it over to Rohit. Thanks, Chloe. In our shading network, which does the bulk of the neural rendering work, we supply the albedo map, the input foreground, and a variety of candidate specular light maps computed with different Fong exponents, which control the broadness of the specular highlights to a first network that we call SpecularNet. The idea here is that we don't actually know the per pixel specular roughness from the face, so we learn a spatially varying specular light map, which can pull pixels from each one of the candidate specular light maps as needed. This final specular light map, the albedo, and the diffuse light map are provided to the neural rendering network, producing the final relit foreground image. Now we can look at the loss terms for the relighting module. All of these are compared with ground truth. We have an L1 loss on the geometry image, albedo, and relit image. We also have a VGG loss on the albedo and relit images using features extracted from the images with the VGG network pre-trained for image classification on ImageNet. We also have an L1 loss on the relit images after first weighting them using the specular reflection map. The rationale behind them, this is that we can train the network to focus on regions uh, that likely contain specular reflections, 
which are challenging for the neural network to synthesize. This is essentially an attention me mechanism for the network, trying to get it to focus on synthesizing specularities. We also have an adversarial loss for the face region only, for the albedo image and the relit image. We found that we could not successfully train a discriminator with full bodies, so we provided face crops only as inputs for the necessary stability during training. For the relit face image discriminator, we supply a face crop of the specular reflection map to act again as an attention mechanism for the discriminator, allowing it to focus on regions with specularities in the input image, which are the hardest parts to synthesize. So clearly we need a lot of data to train our model, but we also need ground truth images for all of these intermediate stages, like surface normals and albedo. For this project, we captured the multi-view one light at a time images of 70 different individuals in a light stage system. Along with an image of the person under the full sphere of lighting to serve as a proxy for albedo, we used OLAT images to perform photometric stereo, allowing us to recover per pixel photometric normals. We also devised a way to generate pseudo ground truth for the alpha mat for every view in the light stage. From our OLAT images, we could generate the target relit images and with the alpha mats, we could composite the subjects into backgrounds derived from lighting environment panoramas. This was all the data required to train our matting and relighting models. So at this point, we've seen the network architecture and data set, so we're ready to look at some results. So here, the input portraits are on the left. These are in the wild images. We don't have ground truth light stage data for any of these subjects. And now we are using a few different lighting environments to relight these three subjects. Here we are rotating the lighting environment around the subject. The idea here is that a photographer can generate a whole new suite of compelling portrait photographs. Um, here I want to particularly point out a few features that we mentioned uh, before that we would be looking to achieve. First, the network successfully removes specular highlights. And you can see this here. First in this subject who has a strong highlight on her cheek, above her eyebrow, and in her hair. You can also see it here for this subject, for the highlight on the forehead and upper nose. To do this, the network must recover underlying diffuse skin or hair color of the subject beneath the specular highlights. The network also successfully adds specular highlights, as we can see for this example subject. As we mentioned earlier, this hasn't really been shown in prior portrait relighting work, so we are happy about this result. The combination of our loss terms and in-network lighting representation were able to produce these highlights. Beyond being able to relight a subject in any environment, we were also interested in relighting a subject under point light sources, where harsh shadows and specular highlights are bound to be particularly visible. Our network can do this as well. Here we generated HDRI lighting environments that approximated the individual light sources within the light stage, and we show that our network can generate plausible OLAT type images. This GIF shows a one light at a time style light stage dataset predicted for in the wild portraits using our neural renderer. So we can pretend that we photographed anybody in the light stage. In addition to the core relighting result, our method also generates all sorts of potentially useful intermediate outputs, including the extracted original foreground, an alpha mat, surface normals, and albedo. We have a lot more results like these in the paper beyond just for, one, uh, for this one subject. Additionally, we show comparisons against two state-of-the-art techniques along with ablation studies in our full paper. Next, we'll show a few applications. Although our method was designed to work on single images, we can apply it for each frame of a video to enable live action compositing. A few results are here. This is a per frame mat and foreground. Next is a per frame albedo and normals. And finally, a few relighting results. More results will be available in our supplemental video. Here are the results for another subject. Additionally, we also have an example of portrait light transfer. Given the input portraits on the left, we can use our earlier work to estimate the high dynamic range illumination. Then given the subjects in the upper row, 
we can relight each one of them using our method so that they appear as though they were in the original scene. But what if you don't have an input lighting environment or a portrait to match? Using some of our earlier work, we show that we can predict the illumination from any background image and then use that lighting to relight any subject to composite into the scene using our current technique. Although we were on a whole happy with these results, there are a few limitations of the current method that we wanted to point out, some of which we are already working to address. First, you may have noticed as we were flipping through the slides that we don't always get the correct albedo for clothing regions. You can see this especially in the blue shirt on the right, where the albedo inference network identifies the dark parts of the flannel pattern as being caused by shading rather than surface reflectance. Additionally, our relighting network is not able to produce the specular highlights that you might want to see in the eye region. And we'd like to fix this as we feel like eye reflections are critical for compelling portraits. On that final note, we'd like to thank all of, all of our collaborators at Google, as well as a few others for their help as we completed this project. Uh, we hope that you attend our live Q&A session for further details. Thank you.